What's happening everyone? Wraith here with another Doom Eternal video. This time around, I wanted to cover the new features that we saw in the E3 gameplay demos. Comparing from QuakeCon last year and the demo we saw at this E3, there have been a lot of changes and new things we haven't seen yet. Before I get going, I wanted to thank you all for the support for checking out this video. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe as well as to share the video so we can get it out there. All right, let's dig in. The Bethesda showcase showed off quite a bit of new things like new updates to older games, Orion, the streaming service, new games, and of course, Doom Eternal. I'll be honest, I was mostly wanting to only see Doom Eternal, but those new games have some potential. Back in QuakeCon of last year, we got to see about 15 minutes of gameplay and really got a taste of what Doom Eternal will be like. We of course got to see the new demons such as the gargoyles, along with some new returning ones like the Kako Demon. Not to mention the new guns that will be able to viscerate the forces of hell. As far as new weapons, the only actual new guns that weren't shown at QuakeCon was the chain gun, BFG 9000, and pistol. For the chain gun, this time around the aesthetics are completely different and not to mention the ammo doesn't seem to use the traditional ammo that the chain gun used in doom 2016 however it still uses the same ammunition of course as the heavy cannon as you can see in the ui weapon wheel but it kind of looks like plasma i'll talk about the ui a bit later other than that the fire rate is faster and it spins up quicker than its predecessor it has the mobile turret mod but instead of three separate barrels there are now four we got a small glimpse of the BFG 9000 and it looks a bit different from the last one. At this point in the lore of the game, the BFG could be more of a fully developed weapon rather than a prototype. I imagine it'll be used the same way as it did in Doom 2016 and hopefully we'll see it in action at QuakeCon this year. Another big change was the equipment launcher. The launcher itself looks a little different and now has two noticeable barrels for the grenades and the flamethrower. The flamethrower as well seems to spew out more of a red flame than what we saw in QuakeCon last year. It may have just been the lighting or they tweaked it a bit for the newer gameplay. I'm still hoping there will be a type of upgrade to the equipment launcher or at least the ability to swap out other attachments. Let me know what you guys think on that. We finally got to see both of the mods for the plasma gun and they are way better than what we had in Doom 2016. The first mod is a kind of microwave beam that will cook the enemy until they explode. The bigger they are, the bigger the explosion. The other mod is similar to the mod Heat Blast, where it would accumulate heat and then when activated, it would send a heat wave from the gun that would kill most enemies within the radius. I really enjoyed this mod in Doom 2016 and used it all the time as a crowd control kind of tactic. Uh, this time, the plasma gun has what seems to be the same concept, but in a form of a sphere or type of plasma barrier that shoots forward and obliterates anything in its path. If you missed the Google Stadia demo a while back, we got to see the remote detonation mod for the rocket launcher. At E3, we got to see it in action as well. Nothing seems to have changed, but I wanted to mention it in case you haven't seen the Stadia demo. Along with the Stadia demo, we saw the micro missiles mod for the heavy cannon at the E3 showing. I really like that mod from Doom 2016, and I'm glad they carried it over to Doom Eternal. Those are the new features we got to see for the weapons, and hopefully in quick on this year, we can finally see the bigger weapons like the BFG, Crucible, and of course the pistol in action. A big thing that id wanted to change in the new installments of doom is how the movement will work for the doom slayer we already saw how the boost movements work along with the mechanics for the meat hook but now there are a lot more things to consider one big thing that stuck out is the return of the radiation suit for those who are not aware in the original games there was a white suit that you could get so you wouldn't take damage when walking on acid or really anything on the floor that could hurt you in doom 2016 the only way to not take damage around such surfaces was to either jump around them or use an invulnerability power up Another feature is the ability to shoot certain spots to open gates and doors, etc. Just like it was in the original game. There were some walls or secrets that you needed to shoot the wall in order to open it up. This feature is also used to activate certain things like blades swinging down to slice up a mancubus. I'm sure that will come in handy for other bigger demons. Along with those new features, there's also swimming involved. The original Doom didn't have any swimming, but Quake had it. So I'm thinking that this is a callback to Quake. This will really change up the gameplay a bit, at least for exploring the map as it's a feature we haven't had in a while. There's also the tentacle enemy that seems to act more like an obstacle rather than an actual enemy. The good thing about them is that you can see where they will pop up, but not every hole has a tentacle. Uh, they will definitely make it challenging for those who think that they can just blow through the game without watching their surroundings. The last thing I noticed that is somewhat new in the gameplay is the use of portals. In this gameplay, you can see a few blue-like portals that may teleport you to other parts of the map. Definitely a callback to the original games by using teleporters to get around and find secrets. However, they could just be part of the demo and may not actually be in the final game, so we'll see. All in all, these features are a little way to make some spots exciting and challenging and to give the Slayer the ability to traverse the maps at ease. 
Something that really makes Doom stand out as a first person shooter is the lack of cutscenes. Doom 2016 somewhat had cutscenes, but not in the sense of a long cinematic experience like other games. It was more of a brief transition. Doom 3 on the other hand did have longer cutscenes than any other Doom game, but we'll let that one slide as it was its own type of game and not really like the fast paced games that we have now. In Doom Eternal it works much like Doom 2016, but this time we get to see the Slayer a lot more often. I believe they did this as a way to show off how awesome the Slayer looks, as well as what he would look like with the other skins that we could use. It would be really cool to see the demonic slayer skin or even the zombie slayer skin in action. I love how id uses these transitions. It makes it feel more fluid when moving to another location. It reminds us how awesome the slayer and the environment looks like in that perspective. Uh, not to mention it's a subtle transition and a moment to get ready for the next arena. One of my complaints about Doom 2016 is that we didn't get to see the slayer enough from a third person perspective. In Doom Eternal I'm sure there will be more of a reasoning to the transition and a third person perspective once we finally get to play the whole game. Talking about perspectives, the heads up display has drastically changed since last year. The HUD that we saw from QuickCon was more in line with how Doom 2016 looked like, but now it is full of color. I know that a lot of people are somewhat upset about the new design, and I was a little bummed out at first, but after looking at it more, it is really helpful and it grew on me. Starting at the bottom left, we can clearly see how much armor and health we have, and I find that it's big enough to see clearly without it getting too much in the way. Above the armor is the boost meter. Uh, the way you can tell is by the two bars that surround the arrow. Depending on how many boosts you have, it will show them depleted or not. To the right of the boost is the power up blood punch. This time around, the meter fills up from the amount of glory kills that are done. Once the meter is full, you can falcon punch those demons back to hell. Uh, moving on the right side, we can see the ammo meter, which is nicely visible. Uh, to the left of it shows the grenade launcher icon and the secondary fire icon for the available weapon. Above the ammo meter is the flamethrower and chainsaw icons. And finally above the chainsaw meter is another icon for which I'm not sure about, but could be a type of perk or permanent upgrade. All in all, it may seem like a jumbled mess, but there's a good chance that it can be customizable. And in 2016, the HUD had some customization to it, allowing the aim reticle to be different and determine how much info was on the screen, like tutorials, etc. You then could go without the HUD and even go in the original Doom pose with the weapons in the middle. If it ends up not being customizable, I'm sure that over time, no one will really be bothered by the new HUD as they'll be too busy ripping and tearing demons. The last part of the HUD is the compass that has more color to it, of course, and the demonic corruption meter. The corruption meter has most of us baffled as it could be a meter that determines the amount of demons left in the level, progress in the level, or how much of the map has been explored. As time goes on, I'm sure we'll get a sure answer on what it will be. Let me know what you think it could be meant for. Another thing that is different is the weapon wheel. It seems to be in line with the whole colorful HUD, but they have also categorized the weapons by color. It looks like gold is for the shotguns, yellow for the heavy cannon and chain gun, purple for the plasma gun and ballista, and orange for the rocket launcher. Since the pistol hasn't been revealed yet, I imagine it would have a different color as well. Because of the whole organization of the HUD by color, I'm really starting to think that there will be some kind of customization. Imagine being able to change the color of the plasma type to blue instead of purple, or make everything blue to make them more simple. I guess time will tell if it will be customizable or not. Uh, something that was very useful in Doom 2016 was the use of the Praetor Suit upgrades and the runes. Those would allow you to be a stronger and faster Demon Slayer and to take out hordes of enemies with ease. In Doom Eternal, it seems that we'll still have those upgrades, but they seem to be done differently. The runes, for instance, look a little different from what we've seen in the QuakeCon gameplay last year, and they seem to be a permanent upgrade until we know more about them. There are permanent upgrades for health, armor, and ammo in Doom 2016 in the form of Argent Cells that you would find throughout each level. And now in Doom Eternal, there are statues that you can break open to receive a shard to upgrade yourself. There isn't any gameplay footage that shows the upgrade statues for the armor or ammo, but I'm willing to bet they look very similar to the health statue. I would love to see what the menu would look like and see if there would be a way to customize your rune loadout if they are able to be set up like that. Hopefully QuickCon this year will answer the many questions that we all have. Finally, one of the biggest new features of Doom Eternal is the enemies that we can smash to a pulp or slash in half. We did see quite a bit of new demons in the footage from QuickCon last year, but now there are even more that we got to see. One such demon is the carcass. If you watch the Google Stadia gameplay, there was a very small glimpse of the demon, but at each 
we got to see a lot of him. One thing I noticed about the carcass is that he seems to play a support role. He's able to put up an Argent shield or barrier as a way to block off fire from the Slayer and force him to maneuver around or above it. It may not seem like that big of an obstacle, but if you were intending to shoot your last round from the Ballista or Rocket Launcher and he puts that wall up, you're out of luck. Another demon that looks awesome looks like a Cyber Hell Knight of sorts. He's even on the front cover for the game as well. Seems to act like the Hell Knight and has even more devastating melee strikes due to his energy blades. Another demon from the stated gameplay was the Prowler. It was a demon from the multiplayer in Doom 2016 and is now present to rip apart in Doom Eternal. He seems to have the ability to shoot a type of plasma as a primary attack along with melee strikes up close. He can also teleport which will make it very interesting when playing the game. Something that was pointed out by someone on a comment from my other video is that there is a chain gunner or possibly a shotgun zombie man in the game. It's really hard to see him in the trailer but here he is in all his glory. It seems like there are multiple barrels on his gun which would make him the chain gunner but he could be something else. Let me know if you think he's a shotgun guy or the chain gunner. Other than that, in the trailer there's the serpent looking demon with a chain whip whose name is Whiplash and the ethereal wolf. I'm not a huge fan of the name Whiplash, but I'm sure the demon will be challenging to fight against. The ethereal wolf may be some kind of enemy found in Sentinel Prime or possibly an ally of sorts. We'll need to see more gameplay to really know for sure. Uh, now, how could I forget Vega? He's no demon of course, but he is obviously in Doom Eternal. Flight path to Mars. Calculating thrust vectors. Launching in three, two, one. Looks like the Doomslayer will have an AI companion along with them after all. And last but not least, the Cyber Demon is just like the original one. That version of the Cyber Demon is my favorite, and I'm glad they brought him back. All in all, Doom Eternal has so many new things in it and will blow us all away when we finally get our hands on it. QuickCon will most likely show more things that we are wanting to see, especially more of the battle mode and hopefully more of Invasion. Let me know what you are all looking forward to at QuickCon in the comment section. This year of Doom is certainly getting better and better. I hope you all enjoyed the video and if so, smash that like button and subscribe as it really does help my channel. Be sure to also check out my Instagram and Twitter accounts at Rip and Tear Gaming to stay on top of everything Doom and other things. Uh, you guys are all awesome and once again, I appreciate all the support. Hope you all have a good one. Until next time, don't forget to rip and tear. Peace. Summer.